In this three steps to sketch, we'll graph the basic cotangent graph, y equals cotangent 2x. And I'm using basic to mean unshifted, so we don't have any vertical shifting or horizontal, sometimes referred to as phase shifting going on there. It's in that standard or general unshifted form. So here's our outline, our three steps. We'll first analyze and find all our essential information. It's essentially the get organized step. In step two, we'll plot our base pattern for our first cycle. And in step three, we'll sketch in the graph and repeat for as many cycles as we need. All right, so we're graphing y equals cotangent of 2x. It's in that general form y equals a cotangent bx. Okay, no shifting, again, going on here. And we'll start step one, our essential step, by identifying a and b. So a is the coefficient in front of the cotangent function. It's an understood one here. Okay, that's going to be a key value for us when we do our base pattern. It'll be those, what I like to call, curve shaping points. Um, it'll help us get those. And then b we see is the coefficient of x. In this case, that's a two. So B tells us how many cycles of our graph should happen between zero and pi, and it also helps us find the period. And we do that taking pi and dividing by B, since this is for cotangent. So nice and simple here, the period's going to be pi over two, and remember period is just the length of a horizontal cycle. So now that we have the period, let's go ahead and choose how to label our axes. So horizontal scale is really important here. You can choose how to label your tick marks however you want, but with three steps to sketch, I think it's really easiest to be intentional about this. Take your horizontal um, scale by taking your period and dividing by four, because we're going to have four key parts of our base pattern. And that just makes sure that your graph aligns with each horizontal tick mark. It makes it nice and neat. So if we take our period and divide by four, let's write that out. We're dividing by four, so that's the same thing as multiplying by one fourth, if that's easier for you to look at. So we see our tick marks on our horizontal axis should be counting by pi over eight. Now you don't have to be as intentional with the vertical axis. In most cases, one will work really well. So let's go ahead and take a minute to get our axes labeled. We'll start with the horizontal one, and we're labeling our tick marks counting by one pi over eight. So one pi over eight, 2 pi over 8 reduces to pi over 4, 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8 reduces to pi over 2. I like to do a quick little double check here. The fourth tick mark moving to the right should always match your period with this method, and it does. Let's keep going. 5 pi over 8, 6 pi over 8 reduces to 3 pi over 4, 7 pi over 8, and 8 pi over 8. So to get the negative part of this axis labeled, I'm going to head Go ahead and pause if you're working along, pause, and then we'll meet back when we have it labeled. All right, so this is what the negative part of the horizontal axis looks like. It's all the same values, just negatives. All right, now let's label vertical axis counting by ones. Easy enough. And now we have our grid nice and set up for our actual graph. Before we move into graphing, I like to find the asymptote generating equation. So there's a nice little formula for this. Our asymptotes happen once a period, and we should know from our parent graph y equals cotangent x that our first asymptote for unshifted cotangent, so this is for our parent graph, starts at x equals zero or on the y-axis. Okay, and it happens once a period. So that little formula that's nice to know is x equals zero plus pi over b k. So first asymptote at zero, and then the plus pi over b will get you an asymptote every period. Pi over b is the period, remember, in general. And k represents an integer. And depending on what integer you substitute in, you'll get a different asymptote along the graph. So let's go ahead and find our asymptotes for this particular equation. We see our asymptote should be x equals 0 plus pi over 2 k. So play around with this a little bit. See where your asymptotes are going to be. That way, when you actually graph the base pattern, you can compare and have a double check. So if we substitute in 0 for k, of course, we get that first asymptote we talked about at x equals 0 or the one on the y-axis. If you sub in k is 1, we should expect one at pi over 2. When k is 2, 
we see we should expect another asymptote happening at pi. Let k be negative 1 or negative 2. You'll see asymptotes should be negative pi over 2, negative pi. And so this is just a really nice thing to be expecting as you are graphing these points. So now we've analyzed, we have all our essentials, we're ready to graph. So step two is to plot the base pattern. Now recall that the base pattern for cotangent is going to be asymptote, point, that's a curve shaping point, zero, which is your x-intercept, and another curve shaping point. So in general, it's the graph that looks like this. Okay, just a quick little sketch. It's nice to kind of have that in your mind. So now let's go ahead and plot this base pattern. We're sketching our first cycle of cotangent 2x. So we start with this lovely asymptote on the y-axis. Our next feature in the base pattern is going to be a curve shaping point. It's the one with a higher value. Um, sometimes I call it the upper curve shaping point. Um, not very technical, but helps you know which one. So all you have to do is plot this at your first horizontal tick mark moving to the right, so at pi over 8, and the y-coordinate value will be a, so it'll be 1. So here's our first curve shaping point, that upper curve shaping point. At the next horizontal tick mark moving to the right, at pi over 4, we'll have a 0 or an x-intercept. And our final piece in our base pattern is our lower curve shaping point. So this will happen at the third horizontal tick mark to the right of the origin, and the y-coordinate will be the value that's opposite of a, so negative 1. All right, so we have our base pattern here. This is one cycle of y equals cotangent 2x. Let's go ahead for step 3. We're going to sketch in the actual graph connecting these points, and then we'll repeat for as many cycles as we need. So sketching in our cotangent graph right here, and we have one full cycle of cotangent 2x. The repeat part is very easy. All you have to do is replicate this pattern over and over again. So let's go in our positive direction. Notice as we start the pattern with an asymptote, it's happening here at x equals pi over 2. That's great. That's what we had talked about with our asymptote generating equation. That's when k is equal to 1. All right, so repeat the pattern points. 0, point, and then we have another very big cotangent curve. And if you restarted the pattern, of course, we don't have all the space for that, but you do see that you would have an asymptote at pi, and that's when k equals 2 in that asymptote generating equation. So we have really good confirmation that the graph we're sketching is 100% accurate. So now let's work the pattern in the other direction. You can either work it backward like this, so lower curve shaping point, 0, upper curving, curve shaping point, asymptote. There's that asymptote at negative pi over 2 when k is equal to negative 1. Or sometimes it's nice to count four tick marks over if you like working the pattern in the forward direction. So asymptote at negative pi, upper point, 0, lower point. OK, and let's sketch those curves in. And we have a really nice graph of y equals cotangent 2x. We have four whole cycles of this. Um, something interesting to note before we finish up here, remember we said that b is 2, and we said that that means we should have two cycles of our graph happening between 0 and pi. So if we look between 0 and pi right here, you see we have 1, including the asymptote of course, 2 cycles happening. So that's another great way to double check the accuracy of your final graph. Hope this helped you understand how to sketch y equals cotangent of 2x. So take this method and apply it to graphing other unshifted cotangent graphs. Um, take some practice, but once you've got the method, then you'll feel really confident graphing these. Um, I will also post more worked examples really soon, so check out those links in the video description, and thanks for watching.